What is going on, y'all? This is John Alsace with Face Mask Fantasy. We're bringing you new fan. We're bringing you new up-to-date fantasy content every day on our YouTube channel. So if you have not subscribed already and you like winning your fantasy league, then hit that button, y'all, for real. But without further ado, let's get back into some more rookie talk. We're going to continue the string of rookie tight ends that we've been doing, and today we're going to be getting into Brevin Jordan. Now, the Texans selected Miami tight end Brevin Jordan with the 147th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft. He stands at 6'2", 247, so he doesn't come with the height that you would normally assume assume would go with a top tier receiving tight end but in college he was primarily utilized as a mismatch from the slot he leveraged his 4.6840 speed to consistently separate for an average of 2.93 yards per route run versus man coverage and an fbs high 365 yards after catch among tight ends last season Brevin Jordan has been a hot topic among tight end prospects as he was considered to be a top three option at the position in the early part of the draft process. Some had him at number two behind Pitts even, but he slipped due to teams viewing him as more of an athlete than an actual football player. So he ended up falling to the fifth round after eight other tight ends had been drafted and that was a little bit surprising to me. Interestingly enough, he has the most yards after catch again by a tight end in 2020 in college. He had 352, Kyle Pitts had 260. So he had almost 100 more yards after catch than the best tight end prospect of all time, pretty much. We don't often see players slip in the draft due to off-field concerns, especially at the tight end position, but this is exactly what happened to Brevin Jordan, and it's due to his lack of blocking prowess and his tendency to body catch instead of catching with his hands, as well as apparently, and apparently, according to Pro Football Network's Tony Pauline, who is their draft analyst, Jordan has and I quote, not come across well in interviews, end quote. And that was during the draft process. But let's look back at his production again, because this is what really matters to me. In his three seasons at Miami, he was a really stable pass catcher. He caught 105 passes for 1,358 yards and 13 touchdowns. And he came on strong as a red zone threat with seven touchdowns in 2020 alone. And if you look at the Houston tight end room, it's wide open. They got Ryan Izzo, Jordan Atkins as the biggest names. Ryan Izzo was a guy who could not get it done on the Patriots when there was nobody else there. And Jordan Atkins, same situation, except on the Texans. He, he just, he's been on the Texans for a few years, just hasn't shown consistent receiving ability when on the field. So Brevin Jordan should come in and pick up a lot of their receiving reps as a rookie when you take into account the other tight ends on this depth chart. But when you look at wide receiver, that's where it gets really interesting because outside of Brandon Cooks and rookie Nico Collins and Randall Cobb, if you count him, there's really no other receiver of consequence on this roster. Sure, they have Kiki QT. They just brought in Anthony Miller for peanuts. But you could see a route to him getting the third most targets on this team, maybe even the second most targets on this team if everything goes his way. If Brandon Cooks is the only viable target in this offense and it takes more than a season for Nico Collins to really put it together and Randall Cobb is just at the end of his career and falls off a cliff, we could see that theoretically. And, and in that case, Brevin Jordan would become the number two target in this offense. And I don't think that's crazy to speculate on. He's at least, at the very least, he's an interesting dynasty stash. He can probably be had, again, for peanuts. As the consensus on him, as you can judge by his draft capital, is pretty low. He has as much year one upside as pretty much anybody in this draft class not named Kyle Pitts. But he also comes with the downside as the Texans do not project to be a good offensive team. We don't know who the quarterback is going to be. He could prove draft analysts correct in that he's more of an athlete than a football player at one of the most demanding positions you can play in the NFL. So if he's there with my last pick in a season long league, and I know he's going to be there with my last pick because nobody seems to be very high on this guy at all, despite everything that I just laid out for you, I'd pick him up and see, just check out what his snap share is, see how this offense shakes out, because we really don't know who Tyrod, who Davis Mills are going to be 
targeting as their top tier, their second tier, and their tertiary option in this offense. Now, one thing we do have to mention here is that news did just come out that Deshaun Watson is going to be reporting to practice and is going to be playing through all the rest of offseason activities as if this were any other year for him, which obviously it is not. We don't know how his legal situation is going to shake out, but if it takes the NFL a while to continue to figure out what's going on with this situation, we could actually see Deshaun Watson play football for this team in 2020, in 2021. It's technically conceivable. And if that were to happen, again, looking at this pass catching group on this team and looking at the running backs too, David Johnson, Mark Ingram, and Philip Lindsay, not inspiring a lot of confidence, Brevin Jordan might come in and be a lightning rod for this team at a position that doesn't typically yield year one production. So what do you guys think? Do you guys think there's any upside to this guy? Or are you completely off of Brevin Jordan because of all the off-field and on-field concerns and the fact that this team just doesn't project to be any good? Put your thoughts in the comment section below. If you would not hit that subscribe button, please do. It helps us out, helps you out. But either way, thank you for checking us out. This is Face Mask Fantasy once again, bringing you new up-to-date fantasy content every day on our YouTube channel. Thank you for listening have a great day.